Yeah, the way into the Hall of Clestrum, if you were a smart person, um, and socially upper class, uh, you've got the road coming from Orpha, Kirkwall, this way. I mentioned the turning circle for coaches, that would have been down there, the coaches would have drawn up and people got out of their coaches at the bottom of the stair and walked up. And here they would have been greeted by um, a butler type servant and they would have held on to a banister rail like this coming up the hall, much the same as we see on the stair there. These bits of banister we find all, all over the place. They, they were used for tying down bales and all manner of things. So, but they are turning up. We found some in the uh, in the West Pavilion and ones in here as well. So it's good to have them. If it was night time coming in for dinner. And come to this, which is the lobby, and just up there is an iron hook where a lantern would have been lit, and it would lit up this space. Uh, there's marks under here, yeah, just here. You can see um, that's a hole in the floor there, but there's a mark there where there was a partition wall coming this way, and there was a doorway here into. Uh, a little dining room. Um, it would have been a, a lovely fireplace there, not very nice now. Um, it is very rotted. It's sandstone, again, most likely from Brim's Quarry on Hoy. Uh, it would have likely been carved there and brought over and in set, but it's rotted. This was a very damp wall, and <coughs> it has just perished. Um, this stone, lintel stone, is of igneous rock, and survived the heat very well. You can actually see bubbles in it, where molten um, gas, you know, the, the melting stone and gases formed. It's a really exciting piece of Orkney's geology. So, a nice intimate dining room with a view to the south. And then the, over here is the grand reception room, the salon. I'm standing above the line of acro props we have below. And um, Paddy Casey, our build a friend, put these in for us above that to support the upper floor um, and as I say if this hadn't been done we'd have probably lost both floors so that was a great gift indeed and uh, they continue on that way they are but they are on the line of the dividing wall between the dining room and the salon there would have been a doorway at about this position, just here, you can see there's a notch there and a notch there, but none in between. So this would be a little doorway into the Grand Salon, which was grand. The windows are blocked, of course. They were blocked up in, well, I'm not sure when, I, when, when the place was still being lived in, to, to, to save on heat. Um, the fireplace was even blocked up when people were living here, the farmers were living here. Um, and the, the source of heating was actually paraffin. And they cooked with, on paraffin stoves. Uh, we learned that from one of the servants, she was a very old lady, who, who came here on a visit when we had an open day and she had she came in and she came up those stairs and she told us that because I asked about the fuel and she said, Oh, we didn't we didn't burn peats, no, we we just had paraffin. So I thought that was interesting. So <clears throat> the windows would have been wonderfully grand affairs and you would have had a magnificent view 
of Hoy Sound and again the ships going off to Canada and coming back. So this is a most important view from the house. Um, this fireplace was originally just the sandstone surface with a beading here, quite elegant. Uh, but it was altered in a later phase. It was, you can see there's um, pick marks in here, keying marks, and that was to have fine cement on so that you could attach a marble surface. So there would have been a marble, um, probably, I'm told, probably black, um, and, uh, and a marble mantel shelf here too. But the, then there was a, a sequence of other fireplaces. And when this is opened up, we'll excavate that archaeologically. And we'll, we can see all the various phases of fireplaces from this one through to um, finally when it was blocked in. There was one um, Palladian mansion uh, that, to stop the drafts, they shoved the library up the chimneys, and that certainly stopped the drafts, but it, it preserved the library. So, but I, I don't know that we have that here. Uh, up there is the last vestige of the panelling. Uh, so from that we can probably do, well we can certainly do a lot of reconstruction of the panelling in this room. Uh, the panelling, there's little wooden dukes going into here which will secure panelling going down to floor level. And we've got that so there would have been shutters and all manner of things. So uh, in the Georgian days um, they had squarer windows and there would have been nine windows in this frame but these, these are not original um, they are of a later date, some maybe something into the 1800s and these are the sort of windows that John Ray would have uh, looked out of. So that is, a, that is an interesting uh, facet this wall is, oh God, it's so, it's, this is quite damp, although it's drying. I can tell you, short, short ago, last winter, it was wet, but it's drying now. And that's because we had the wind and water type works done uh, three years ago. Um, but, because it's drying, there's a peculiar line here. You can just see, and there's another corresponding one over there. And there's a wooden beam across there. So is there a cupboard in there? That's, it is possible. Uh, this window here was blocked up um, and made into a cupboard. Uh, it would have probably stopped um, the cooling effect as well. So, uh, so that's blocked, made into a cupboard. But you've got the good wooden lintel over the top still. This wall here seems pretty intact. I don't know that there's uh, an insert in here, but as it dries, we might see something. There's no wood going across the top. And from up here, you could look and see what was going on in the courtyard. And if somebody was just swinging the lead a bit or leaning on a broom, you could uh, go, ah, 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 and they pick themselves up and carry on working. But um, these windows, uh, part of the machinery of the hall, you could see down there for you know, people coming up with goods or guests coming, and uh, yeah, interesting. This room here, I walked into another room without explaining it. Sorry, there's a wall here. Um, you can see it, the, the marks of it in the floor. And there's a division going this way. And you can see on there where there was a baton and there's plaster either side of it. So there was a, a wall going along here. So we have what is termed as a little bedroom. And there... And there's a fireplace in the corner, a lovely little 
fireplace, rounded fireplace, and we found bits of a, 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 a cast iron rounded fireplace in the excavations outside. So it destroyed at some time and chucked out there. But this fireplace here is interesting in its phases. Originally it was the Brims Quarry sandstone. There's a post there and a post there and this mantel shelf mantel was laid on top. At a later date it was drilled and wooden wooden dowels placed. So that will have held probably a mahogany fireplace with a marble um, mantel shelf and it is said that it would likely be white marble because it was uh, black marble marbles for the male dominated area and the white marble was for the ladies. Um, that's what I've been told. But again there's a nice chimney breast here. Uh, there was a hole up there so that somebody could uh, sweep the chimneys at times. So we've got the nice plasterwork here and there with the division uh, where um, the end of the wall butted. So I've gone through another wall which, as I explained, was there into what's called a, a dressing room. And there's a nice little fireplace, that's the little oval top fireplace, rounded top fireplace there. Um, a window with a view to the east. And there would have been uh, a, a wash basin and ewer in here, um, along with a commode and um, maybe a little wardrobe for clothes and things. So it's a nice wee ladies' room. The, I haven't yet spoken about the partitions which still exist. <coughs> so we'll do that now. Um, here we've got a door frame which gives us a good, you know, the size of the doors. There's little bits of hinges and brackets. Uh, so we have that and that seems to be original. Uh, we have here, the high skirting board, so we can reconstruct a lot from this. There's the lath and plaster, uh, which is quite deteriorated there, as you see, and it's deteriorated so much there that it's gone. <laughs> but we do have this, and from this evidence, we can do uh, a great deal in the reconstruction of the Grand Salon.